so here's a quick video of uh, to answer some people's questions about how I get the watercolor really smooth. Um, so I did uh, I painted these um, and uh, it took about two hours and I want to show how it was done. So uh, if you want, you could get the same effect on your watercolor. So um, I usually just start with a uh, base color of yellow. Um, usually I like a little bit of a warmer, well it depends on the, on the, what I'm watercoloring, but these have, I wanted these to be a little bit warmer, maybe a little cooler for the leaves, but warmer for the, um, <clears throat> for the wood, the, what is it called, wood, I guess they call it a tree trunk, <laughs> made out of wood, um, and I, you got to start, uh, I usually the the tables the angles terrible and I apologize for that but the angle is tilted and so the water tends to flow down so you sort of have to strategize before you start each wash each of these is done in a very thin wash of color um, so while this is going to be brown and green I like to put a yellow base down first so that it really pops out and it's really bright you won't see the yellow later, although it kind of shines through in a weird way. You really have to look to see it. Um, so I sort of strategize and start on one end of uh, the area that I'm going to do a wash and then um, pull it all the way down. You sort of, they call it pulling the bead, like the little drip of water. Keep pulling that downward until you get a uh, nice... Um, even effect. You always have to know, so you have to use decent brushes because you always have to know exactly how much water is on your brush so you don't put too much on and you can't control all the water on the paper and if you put too little on you have to keep going back to your well of color that you've mixed and it um, can dry on the paper and leave a mark. So uh, you've got to prepare, you've got to think about it before you start. Um, now I'm mixing some brown color um, for the tree trunk. I always test it out first. Uh, I start real light and then you get in, go in a little bit darker um, as you progress. And again, I'm starting at the top and you sort of pull it down as you go. Um, for this brown, I, I generally, so when you want to darken a color, I, I wouldn't say never, but 99.9% .9 of the time I never ever use black or even a brown to to start a color <clears throat> You can see that's my main palette on the upper left of the screen um, There's no black those those dark colors are blues and there's no um, white I use I try to always use the white of the paper um, And that's just my preference, but uh, it, I end up with a palette that I really like um, once I'm finished so and I never use a um, I never use a black either. Um, instead, I prefer to mix my own black, like go with grays, because then you can com completely control the warmth and the coldness of the color. Uh, with black is generally black, and it kind of kills and deadens. Um, it's like uh, it's like the living dead. If you look in their eyes, you can see that they're eyes, but they're dead eyes. And that's what black and white does in uh, watercolor for me. It deadens it. Um, when you mix your own color, you are putting your own choices into the feeling of the of the black or the <clears throat> of the white. Um, it's hard to do. It's hard to strategize sometimes about white because once the paper's covered, it's covered. And uh, you can go in with gouache sometimes afterwards, which I super rarely but occasionally do. Um, but I never really got that into wash. So you can see the darker edge of that of the green color there is is liquidy, and I pull it down. I never touch the color after like further up on the tree there. I wouldn't touch that because it's going to leave a mark. Let it dry on its own so that it's nice and smooth. If you don't, it's going to get it's going to be interrupted and it's going to get all kind of crazy. <clears throat> so this is a green. Um, I start really light. You notice at the end, it's a much darker tree it's darker darker leaves but you got to start light if you start going with a really bright saturated color it's not going to look smooth that's another way to keep it smooth is to keep it um really light washes many many light washes and then you can build up a complexity you can add um 
and you'll see later I'll, I'll one part of the same smooth area is one color and another part of that same connecting area with no like dry lines is a completely different color um, I also like to um, it's easier to when you're drawing something small like this like a book or a small sheet of paper to be able to twist it around and move the paper that you're going in all different directions so now here I'm going into the branches of the tree and darkening um, with a so somewhat cooler brown um, I'm trying to imagine since this is just made from my imagination I'm trying to imagine where would be dark and where would be light because there's no real shadows I'm just inventing them in my head and obviously darkers recede and lighters come forward and uh, and same with um, general the general rule for color is blue recedes in space and warm tends to come forward in space and so uh, the background branches of the roots and the trees are going to be a darker and cooler and the the branches and the roots that are more closer to the viewer eye is going to be um, slightly warmer and less watercolor and less um, so there'd be less blue and green in my brown when I mix browns I generally use a cadmium medium yellow for this particular brown so it's a little bit warm and uh, I use some uh, this is all Winsor Newton watercolor Oh, see, here I'm using um, a yellow, and then I'm brushing down with a darker green, and, um, and you do a couple layers of that, and it gives you a really nice gradation of a bright yellow on the tippy top of the tree and uh, this darker green toward the bottom, and it blends together real smooth. You've got to do it while it's wet, so you've got to time it just right. And it's again, it's important to know exactly how much water is on your brush, and you can really only do that if your brush is a good... Uh, it's a really good brush. I use Winsor Newton Series 7 Kalinske Sables. I think this is a number four um, round tip. Uh, I like the round tips because you can um, get tiny, tiny areas and also get larger areas. It's a much more versatile brush than any other shape. So here I'm going. Oh, what was I saying about the... Uh, I forget. Anyway, I'm getting uh, the trees getting a little more saturated I'm starting to like this color a little bit more you can see how it's the those beads of wetness are getting pulled down so that it's a nice even coat all down uh, the leaves it's like more like a sausage the way I drew this one but uh, I had to speed it up because the whole process took about two hours and uh, 30 minutes for this video is more than enough. I'm sh I'd be surprised if anybody watched the whole thing. So, uh, just going down, I kind of figured the bottom of these would be a little bit darker. Um, another thing I like to do, uh, uh, sort of a strategy, so more strategies to think about while you're using watercolor, is to do more than one piece at a time. There are two trees here. Uh, they take a little bit of time each time and the washes are, are, aren't super saturated with water. It's not like soaking wet. And so um, I think I'm going to mix some new colors here. Oh, I got sick of trying to get a decent brown. So I want a whole bunch of brown that I'm going to mix together and then I can use this mixture and uh, I'm wetting the colors there with a little eyedropper. Uh, so I was saying uh, more, you do more than one watercolor at a time because by the time you're finished um, adding a light wash on one you can go to the next one and that will be dry and by the time you're done with that wash you can go to the, the previous one and that one will be dry I generally don't I like to be I guess I'm a little anally retentive I like to have total control with my watercolor I don't like to go wet on wet so which means you've put a lot of water down on the surface that you want a watercolor and then you just add sort of random um, intense colors and it bleeds around and adds little cloudy weird things uh, I don't do that unless I'm like maybe doing clouds or something and even then I try to do it more controlled um, so I forget where I was going with that um, anyway I'm uh, now going in with my tiny tip of my round brush and getting eensy weensy little areas and darkening them and uh, it's easiest for really complex sort of different um, like a voluminous 
ball like this if you want you don't just want two surfaces you want you want it to look like it's a ball so you've got to have several different um, darknesses throughout the root system and so I generally go dark and light and then sort of fill in everything in between and you go real slow I'm doing the same thing with these branches up here um, I this is my home table I have a studio where I have uh, a bigger set of watercolors but uh, this is just fine especially for a sketchbook you don't need more than this these are some old sets that I sometimes just refill with tubes and let them dry and um, sorry for the angle there I think I need to get a better uh, mount for my camera which is just my iPhone more of the same just uh, kind of going underneath each branch so that I can see um, it looks like there's volume to it you know the light would be on top even though it's covered by a tree the light would be on top and the dark would be underneath because generally the Sun is above our heads uh, this root system was kind of fun it makes you want to do more um, it's fun to do really complex stuff you ca I can't imagine like before I started watercoloring this the root ball thing I could not imagine what it would look like um, until I start doing it and then it just starts to gel as you're going you just kinda use all the little tricks I said with the cool and the dark and the, the receding and the um, objects that come forward for the warm colors and it just sort of starts to take shape and you just start to exaggerate that one of the hard things I think uh, with watercolor is getting really 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 dark especially the way I do it with light light washes is getting really dark areas and it's important for uh, like this root area is to be able to see that you're not getting very dark watercolor sometimes it gets it just stays really light um, so that's why you need tons of layers one thing I like to do is to um, not clean off my palette because then you end up with colors that have dried and then you just add a little bit of water and you can get really intense dark colors um, as I said earlier I, I'd never go in with a dark color in the beginning but at the very end to emphasize a receding area uh, in space um, then I'll use some dark colors um, and then it and then it kinda gives you this nice voluminous effect so it's still not quite dark enough I'm mixing some more like a warmer brown there um, for the top part I didn't I didn't like how I didn't think the root system here was bright enough as far as wood goes so I'm mixing um, mixing some nice sort of dog poop brown in there to make it uh, warmer a little friendlier I think the root system whole root system could have been a little cooler in the end now that I think about it but what are you gonna do um, so this is a sketchbook drawing and I don't I was just imagining playing around I don't I didn't have a plan I don't have a plan for this um, but I do these a lot and eventually they end up becoming larger paintings larger drawings um, now I'm kind of concentrating on learning animation so it may be a part of uh, an animated little movie later on I don't know that little nubbin on the top of the on the top of the bottom sausage tree I had two that looked a little bit like eyeballs I generally don't like to anthropomorphize my objects um, it's too cute for me I'm not into super cute st I mean I like some cute stuff but I, I don't like to make it and um, so I got rid of the other one because it looked too much like two funny eyeballs and the um, the root or the branches look like teeth and I mean I I don't mind if it it's a slight suggestion every once in a while but um, I'm not that into I'm not that into that I'd rather you interpret it how you will and not me forcing you to say hey this is a cute creature um, because it's a tree for God's sake uh, what so the upper right tree um, I kept thinking and I'm sure I was I mean I was influenced so these each of these trees are influenced by very specific pop cultural references um, the upper right one oh see I'm doing a blend there the, the light 
yellow on the top and then a darker green on the bottom so it looks a little more voluminous which i like i like saying that word voluminous um so the pop cultural references are uh pretty obscure um 19 p kids who were born in the 70s um which is me i was born in 72. so one of my favorite movies of all time is time bandits and uh i forget the actor's name but the guy who played evil in um in toward the end of the movie time bandits well he was th throughout the whole movie is um the top of his head comes off and starts twirling around with these crazy tools that um he uses in a battle scene and i kept thinking about the top of this tree spinning up and sp like popping up and spinning around um, that one scene and uh, the lower left tree is uh, from a mad magazine cover from the 80s um, huge influence on me uh, there was a cover uh, I think it was just said something stupid like mad cuts the baloney and it was a oh no yeah it was a Conan the Barbarian um, parody where I think it might might have been when the movie Conan came out Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger and he's standing on like a uh, top of a mountain I'll, I'll try to add it here if i can find it the top of a mountain with a giant sword and there's a scantily clad um, woman hanging onto his leg or something and his sword is slicing a giant um uh loaf no tube of bologna what are those called uh salami i don't know what it's called but um thing of bologna and so i'm pretty sure it came from that i mean i've done a lot of like bologna slicey things i've i did a giant um um begonia bologna series um this one is like six feet wide of begonias that look like bologna and i i did all these like you know when someone's head gets cut off like in a cartoonish way uh, you can do slices like head cheese um it would look like um olive loaf or something i don't know anyway back to uh what i'm doing here what am i doing here um just finishing up i really like having doing it in a sketchbook and seeing all of the test colors somewhere on the same page um, i've learned over time that art dealers hate it when you leave that on a drawing so um they have a hard time selling work but that's what I always like I loved going to uh, the Met and seeing like a Rembrandt etching with a little test drawing in the upper left corner like that's like you can see inside the artist's brain and that's like one of my favorite things to do is see that kind of stuff um, you know Da Vinci da, uh, what's his name Bill Gates bought a Da Vinci Codex sketchbook uh, and I guess I took it apart and toured, toured it around the world, toured it, toured it, and that's my Midwest accent, toured, and it, um, I mean, it, you couldn't get into the exhibitions, they were so crowded, people love seeing, I mean, granted, that was Da Vinci, and he had slightly more interesting sketches and thoughts than I do, but still, I think it's interesting to see that kind of stuff, like the art behind the art, I mean, that's one reason I like these kinds of videos is because you get to you don't just get to see the art and then try to wonder what the heck the artist was thinking or how they made it um, that's what's fun about these videos is you get to hear the artist and see um, how it was made not that this is an interesting video but I'm just saying I'm making it because I like to see this kind of stuff when other people make it so um, I thought it'd be interesting I liked having a bright like fresh green color so that's sort of a yellowy color like dry green on the outside of these trees and i thought uh you know like when you cut something open it's like fresh bright um anyway that's so i used a really bright viridian green for the inside of the trees i thought about doing it like bloody red but then i thought eh, that's kind of cliche and that's uh i don't need to make these gross so getting brown sometimes I mean I think brown is one of my favorite colors to mix because you can get so many variations and it can get so complex um, that's why I liked doing the root ball on the bottom of this tree so much and the colors turned out really nice and I think I could for the next one see that's one of the reason I do these in my sketchbook is because you can um, you learn so much 
from uh, taking two hours to, to make something like this when you start like the final piece or a, a, a finished sort of art piece instead of just a sketch piece you've learned a ton from putting your time in in these two hours to make to, to watercolor these I mean you know it's probably four hours two hours of drawing and two hours of watercolor but um but that's why I like um, sketchbooks because it holds all this time and all this um, sort of learning all in one little package it's like a it's like a nice little diary um, so now I'm getting kind of um, particular uh, sorry again about the angle uh, if I do another one of these then I won't have such a crappy angle I tried using a tripod on a tilted desk and this is a little bit of a nightmare but um, yeah now it's just gonna get kind of boring because I'm gonna fast forward through this Yeah, so I just had to speed this up a lot because um, it was going too slow and I don't have that much more to say about some of this. So just adding color to saturate it, um, color on top of color. The, way, the reason it gets bright is because there's so many layers over it. Um, you notice more that yellow on the top of the right tree, the ball tree, um, that fades into the into the darker green you'll see it at the end it'll be a better um, sort of photograph scan of it um, you can see it much more clearly than my crappy camera and uh, the terrible angle just keep going over like I said one of them dries and the other one is ready to go uh, one of them's wet as the other one's drying so you're painting on one as the other one's drying and by the time you're done painting one go back to the other one and it's nice and dry and you can start on that one again so that's, uh, that's what I'm doing just adding little details going over it again and again and again um, one thing um, I try have to remind myself is as soon as you add a color like a light wash onto something it looks really nice and saturated and dark but it never dries that way so always keep that in mind because uh, it's never going to be as nice and bright. So I'm adding dark on the bottom to add to, to make it look a little shadowy. Uh, again, more voluminous tricks, more tricks to add volume. Um, just adding little tiny details. And I could honestly go on and add details forever and adding these tiny little touches. Um, and I just get sick of working, so I just kind of say, okay, it's done. And it's pretty much done. Um, and this is the final. The left is the pencil and the right is the final watercolor. Um, oh, there's my end bumper. So subscribe, please, if you, um, if you like it. And um, oh, there it is. There's my subscribe. And there's my bologna begonia painting, too. So thanks for watching.